Hey students, this is our second lesson on thinking and language. In this one, we're going to talk about the problems that we face when we're trying to solve problems. Last lesson, we talked about ways that we solve problems, but we don't always get it right. So let me tell you why. All right, first off, we start with a mental set. The problems that we face when we are problem solving is that we get stuck in rigid thinking because it's a way that has worked for us in the past. For example, Bert has a problem with his iPhone. He restarts it because that's what he typically does when he has a problem with his iPhone. But this time it doesn't work and he thinks that the phone is broken. That would be a mistake. He gets stuck in that mental set because that was what has always worked for him in the past. He's stuck in what is called functional fixedness. Now functional fi fixedness is the tendency to think of an object only in terms of its typical use. The iPhone, I restart it, it's not fixed, I am stuck. I also get stuck by functional fixedness because I can't think of other solutions for a problem. I can't think of other ways to use something to solve a problem. Here's an example. You have here some candles, uh, a box of matches, which I don't know if you even see boxes of matches, but that's what that is, students, a box of matches, and then thumbtacks. How can we light the candle, your mission, set of tacks, candles, box of matches, place the candle I level on a door so that the wax will not drip on the floor as the candle burns. What are you gonna do? How are you gonna do it? Good luck, agent. Now, if you wanna take a moment to think about how you would accomplish this, pause this video because I'm gonna click and it's gonna show you the solution. If you are stuck in functional fixedness, you may not be able to come up with the solution, but once I click, you'll see how simple it is. And here you have it. All you have to do is stick the thumbtacks into the door and then melt a little bit of candle into the box of the box of matches to get the candle to stand upright. Did you think of it? I'm not sure if I would have. I've seen this in a hundred different psychology books by now, so I know the solution. I'll tell you more about functional fixedness in class, but for now, let's switch to availability heuristics and problems there. Availability heuristic, you might remember from the first lesson, is what is readily available in our mind. It's what pops into our mind basically because we rely on the information that we believe is more popular or easily recalled and overlook that what is, which is less common. For example, Bert believes he's, he's more afraid of flying because he hears about plane crashes more than he does about car crashes, even though car crashes are more frequent. When a plane goes down, you know, it's, it's major news. Car crashes, not, not as frequently, which leads some people to the fear of flying. That is what's available to Bert, and that's why he makes that judgment. Availability heuristics are problems because they cause us to fear the wrong things. Shark attacks? How many people do you know that have been a victim of a shark attack? Get in the ocean, have fun, go swim, you're gonna be okay. This shapes our opinion of things in the news as well. So we have to remember that we make mistakes in our thinking. Now, another way that we solve problems ineffectively is that we believe that we know more than we do. We are guilty of overconfidence. The overconfidence is the bias that we overestimate the accuracy of our beliefs, our judgment, or our performance. Or we might believe that more people agree with us than really actually do. Um, example, people who sing karaoke, they might think that they're excellent singers and then they get in front of a crowd and maybe not so much. We don't like to ask for directions because we don't want to look stupid and um, we believe that we might be a millionaire by the time you're 30. Hey, you might. I mean, buy some crypto, buy some Bitcoin. We are also guilty of something known as belief perseverance. This is when we cling to our own beliefs even though we might be dead wrong. If this is the case, we might go looking for evidence to prove our false beliefs and we're going to get, we're going to dig right in. You know, we're going to dig in our heels and just stick to our prior beliefs. So example, Bert has had uh, four car accidents in the last month, but he continues to believe that he's a great driver. Come on, man. Let's switch gears a little bit and talk about uh, creativity and the ways that we are actually successful when it comes to solving problems. Creativity is the ability to produce new and valuable ideas. Now it may take a higher IQ to be really creative, but you know, average people can be creative. It's not like they can't. 
Thinking creatively requires divergent thinking, which is the ability to generate many different solutions to a problem and will be challenging your divergent thinking in class. Divergent thinking can depend upon five components according to Robert Sternberg. These components are expertise, imaginative thinking skills, venturesome personality, intrinsic motivation, and creative environment. So these things tell me that it takes experience, expertise, I've done it before, you know, I'm trying to solve a problem that maybe I have some background in, imaginative thinking where I'm not afraid to make mistakes, a venturesome personality whereas those mistakes just roll off my back and I'm willing to try new things, intrinsically motivated. I want to do it for me because it's intrinsically fun. I like it. And just being creative in itself. These things can help us solve problems more effectively. So that concludes this lesson. Remember that we make mistakes when we're trying to solve problems. We get stuck in rigid thinking in our mental set. We get stuck with functional fixedness. We use availability heuristics and don't always uh, believe that other people are right when we're wrong and we can be overconfident. All in all, if you're aware of these problems when we are trying to solve problems, you will more effectively solve your problems. That's it for now. See you in the next lesson.